guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. This week I thought we would take a look at a classic, the rummy nose tetra. Now I know a lot of you have probably seen them before. They are a staple. However, I think there's some interesting little tidbits that I can tell you guys about them that you may not know. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. I've stuck some Sarah O'Nip on the glass here to try and make these guys stay still for you a little bit. Um, as you can imagine, with this many in an aquarium, they just don't sit still. So rummy nose tetras are well known with that vivid red nose and the scissor tail in the back, but what you may not know is that there's actually three different types of rummy nose that are available on the market. There is Hemigrammus glaheri, Hemigrammus rotostomus, and Petitella georgiae. Now the most common one is Hemigrammus blaheri. And you have to keep in mind, all three of these species look extremely similar, but there's a few ways that we can tell them apart. The most common one is the Blaheri, and they actually happen to be my favorite. And you can differentiate those from the other two in that the red in their nose extends all the way over their gill plate and often will have almost a diamond shape to the end of it. They also have no body line, meaning no black that extends into their body and no black edges on their anal fin. The next one is Hemigrammus rotostomus, or the true rummy nose. Now these aren't quite as common, and they just have a small amount of black in the anal fin and just a little bit of the black body line. The third is the Georgia, which is called the black thinned rummy nose, and those have very, very, very thick striping in that tail fin. The, also, the red on those can be a little less um, vivid. Now, these are Hemigrammus blaheri, and it's going to be difficult to tell again because they're not staying still. Another interesting thing about rummy noses is that that red only shows up in good water quality. So, if you need to do a water change before these guys show any other symptoms of stress, that nose will wash out, which makes them sort of a signifier fish in a planet aquarium. Something that I think is pretty cool. These guys can take a range of parameters, though most often they do best in a temperature of 76 to 84. This makes them excellent to pair with fish like discus, rams, crebensis, or dwarf cichlids like epistogrammas. They can do well with a wide range of other small, peaceful fishes. Now these are fish that I think needs at least a 20 long for them to really do well, as they are exceptional schoolers, very tight and very directional, so it's best to have a group of 10 or more. Personally, I like a group of 25 or more, but you know me. They come from Blackwater River, so they really appreciate um, a nice structured aquarium with driftwood and plants and leaf litter. They only get to about two inches, so are pretty suitable for you know your smaller community aquarium. All in all, I think they're a pretty versatile fish. They do have a reputation of being fragile upon import, but once established, do very, very well, and are certainly easy to source at most of your fish stores. So I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing some of my opinions on this fish. If not, come back next Sunday and you can hear about a new one. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for your support. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions. Stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Up next, I will be in Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington in the middle of June to present to a couple of local clubs there. Let me know if you're in the area and you think you'll come by. 